Good you make coffee, but I can still <laughs> Good morning and happy Tuesday. Welcome to our weekly leadership call. Today, we are going to be talking on the topic of overcoming fear. It is the second day of Team Cup Month, and I know that many of us have set goals, both individually and as a team. So this is a very important, important topic, in my opinion, um, because I know that when I sat down to make my list and start thinking about the month the other day, I started to feel a little nervous, um, you know, started to doubt myself, second guess myself a little bit and <laughs> dive back into personal development. So I hope to share these tips with you, but I'd like to pass it over to Daisy real quick to help get us started with something that she found in her personal development. Okay. So yesterday, can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, so yesterday and last week, I've been having a really hard time with making friends on Facebook. Um, and I don't know why, because I'm very like outgoing and I start like, and Amanda knows that. Um, but I guess in the back of my head, I'm having the fear of people thinking of me of only sending the friend request because I want to sell them something. And I have to kind of brush that off my shoulders and get over that. Um, so I started to read my personal um, development this morning um, and there was something that like really hit home and it's on page 173 for those who have the book um, and it's called flip you know what I think I can okay so it's called flip the fear um, and it goes so if you find yourself letting look at it from a different perspective start by breaking it down finding what it is that you're really afraid of and then flipping it around to make it work for you, not against you, which is what I'm doing. Show it who's boss. And we are boss, so we have to, you know, put our, I'm the boss, keep it on and keep going. So feed yourself a suck it sandwich. And that's what I did this morning. So, for example, I want to, so I want to write a book um, but I can't get myself to sit down and do it. And that's how I feel about my power hour. Why not? Well, because I'm scared that I will be terrible. What happens if you're terrible? If you're terrible, then you look stupid. And that's how sometimes I feel about posting things about Shakeology and Beachbody. Even though I have a passion for it and I know it works, I just had that shield of others looking down on me. So... Then what? Okay, so people make fun of me. Then what? Then I'm ashamed. Okay, so if you're not writing your book in order to protect yourself from feeling stupid and ashamed, now flip it around. How stupid and ashamed will you feel if you didn't write that book? Mm. Very. I know it's a brilliant idea, and we all have big dreams. So will you? So will your strategy, strategy of not writing in order to protect yourself from feeling stupid and ashamed protect you from feeling stupid and ashamed? No, and since you're risking stupid and ashamed, either way, which version is worse? Mm -hmm. Trying to write it and having it be and having it be terrible, or never going for it and living an unlived medi mediocrity, weepiness, and shame life. So, which one do you choose? Break it down so you can really look at it and diffuse what it is about the situation you're scared of. Here is all about how you choose to look at things. So by sharing your perspective on it, you can let the fear of not doing the thing you're scared of fuel your perspective. And I'm sorry, I'm like kind of nervous as I was reading, and but it just, I just need, and I and I and it's funny how I like I post about fear, and but at the end of the day, like I still have it. I mean, that ties in so appropriately to what we're getting into today. And I appreciate, you know, your vulnerability uh, and you're pushing through. I mean, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to the national wake up call yet from yesterday, but you know, she talks about being resilient and vulnerable and sharing those pieces. And you are not um, alone in what you're feeling. Like I said, I can completely relate and, I know how scary it is, and I honestly, I had one time where I made a similar comment to Tammy and Michelle and said something like, 
oh, you know, so-and-so signed, and I'm going to talk about this as we go, but so-and-so signed two coaches that we went to school with. It's because I'm, you know, I wasn't cool in high school and that's why they signed with her. And Tam and Michelle were like, no, you know why they signed with her? Because she asked them first, what are you waiting for? What are you afraid of? And it was like, it was like a knock in the face, you know? And sometimes we need that reminder. Um, So I thank you for sharing that. I loved that book. Um, Mm -hmm. And we'll definitely need to read it again. And the next book that you need to read after that is another book that I'm going to reference today, Girl Code. And I've been talking a lot about that too. So um, thank you. No, thank you. Um, let me, I'm just going to move real quick. And then you can just like unmute yourself if you guys have something to say or you want me to stop because I'm going too fast. I didn't want to make a PowerPoint for this. I just think it's better when we can do more live. Um, so today we're talking about overcoming fears. You just heard. Um, and I want to start with a quote, as I always do. And this quote is, If you don't risk anything, you risk even more. Ties in perfectly with what was just said. That's by Erica Jung. Um, And then I also want to draw your attention to page 50 in Girl Code, which says, what if we reframed failure? What if we learned to look every situation as a chance to grow? I bet if you looked at every single woman in business that you admire, you'd be blown away by how many times she has failed. All we see when we look at the top coaches in Beachbody is, oh my goodness, she's so amazing. It must have been so easy for her to get there. She just has this special system or special tools that work for her. She just had all the coaches that wanted to work come to her. But what we don't see is how they fell short on their goals or how they had to you know, sign 10 discount coaches who happened to cancel on them at a whim and before they found that one person who was going to be their, their rock star. So we don't see all of that. We don't know what they're going through. Even though we talk on a daily basis, basis, we don't necessarily know what each one of us is going through and how many times we've failed and overcome it and set goals and changed goals because maybe we were afraid that they were too big or changed the date on our goals because we were afraid to push for them. Um, I know that I'm guilty of that. My alarm went off the other day that said we are a top 200 elite team in 2016. And I said to myself, I was like, maybe, maybe it's not such a good idea. Maybe I just want to be an elite team for 2016. Or maybe it would be cool to, you know, be just a two star by the end of the year. And I was like, no, stop it. Get out of your head. You know, this is a goal you set and you're going to stick to it and you're going to push for it and you're going to do every single thing in your power to reach it. So, you know, just reminding yourself not to take the safe route out because if you don't push for it, you'll never know if you were going to be able to achieve it. So, um, number one tip, there's going to be five tips for overcoming fear. Number one is to reframe your goals. So expand your goal to include learning something new and you'll technically never fail. And I want to use Daisy as an example of this because I think she shared a beautiful example a few months ago when she was having a hard time hitting success club. Um, You know, and Daisy told us that that month she really tuned in on figuring out what her why was, what was keeping her pushing forward every single day after hearing no, 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 and not getting responses and just feeling so frustrated. So asking herself questions, reconnecting emotionally to that why, um, I think is a huge thing. So turning it into a learning experience. So what am I going to learn as a result of my goal for 2016? I'm going to learn how to be a better leader. I'm going to learn how to be a better listener because, you know, that's something I have a really hard time with, listening to your whys and listening to your goals and helping to support you on that journey is going to be a huge learning piece in, um, you know, in achieving those goals. And even if for some reason I don't make that goal, knowing that I've learned in the process. So just reframing your goals. Number two, visualize obstacles. So think about the week ahead and visualize and plan for some obstacles or struggles that may arise. Um, You know, they say that it's one thing to think positive about what could happen in the week ahead, but it's not enough to just think positive. You really need to visualize what could happen with a positive outlook on things. Um, Similarly, 
Think of a situation where you're afraid to fail. Visualize yourself hitting that obstacle, feel the fear, and see yourself moving forward past it. Plan how you will overcome the struggle and see yourself succeed despite those obstacles. So for example, it's Team Cup Month. What obstacles might get in the way? Um, you know, I could be busy with Grok. I could need to, you know, I worry about, okay, well, I hit success group 10, so I should be adding to my husband's network or objections I might face, um, reaching out to new people. My, my list that I made for this month is a lot of new people that I have been putting off reaching out to. So what obstacles might I face from reaching out to them or struggles might I face from reaching out to them and how can I overcome it? So coming up with an action plan, um, and again, even there, another obstacle struggle, the amount of time that it might take to implement some of the things that we're going to talk about on today's call. So we're listening and getting all this information, but do you have implementation time to put some of these things into action? Three, uncover your story. Um, what self-limiting beliefs do you hold about yourself? And this is the example that I just started sharing in the beginning, you know, Angela and Kelly signed as coaches with Emily because Emily was cool in high school. I will never make it because I'm not cool enough. I tell myself that all the time. What, what will so-and-so think if I reach out to them because we didn't really talk in high school or we talked for a year in high school and then we didn't talk anymore because I was in music and they played sports. And you know, you hold on to things like that, whether you realize it or not, and that can really hold you back in this business. Um, what I can tell you that I have learned is that some of the most random, to, you know, to use that word, people that I've reached out to from high school have become some of my best friends now. And I absolutely love that after all these years, we're able to put any differences that may have even only been in my head. In high school, I could have been thinking somebody was making fun of me or didn't want to hang out with me or whatever the case may have been. But being able to put those differences aside and connect now and reconnect and rekindle those friendships. So just remembering that like, for the people that do respond to you, you're probably going to be received pretty nicely. Um, especially if you're coming at it from a genuine standpoint and, you know, leading with a genuine compliment, leading with wanting to, you know, become friendly again and build those relationships. So once you uncover this story, notice that it's just that. It's a story. Can you rewrite it? So an example of being able to rewrite it would be, I'm willing to take risks. I learn from my mistakes and I move on. Number four, ask three questions. One, what did I learn from this situation? Two, how can I grow as a person from this experience? And three, what are three positive things about this situation? Stick with this exercise, even if you feel resistant at first. I know that for me personally, I need to put these questions on an index card next to my desk so that I can refer back to them. Um, a lot of this, self introspective work um, doesn't come easily to a lot of us. We don't want to think about this stuff. What did I learn from this situation? I'm like, can I look it up in a book? You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just not something we all feel comfortable with, but the more and more you do it, the more and more you learn about yourself and your abilities and your fears and your self limiting beliefs and the more you're able to overcome them. And then number five is to surrender and feel the fear. Let yourself feel it for a few minutes, but make it just that, a few minutes. Set a timer, you know, five, 10 minutes, and then by the time you're done feeling it and letting go of it, you may actually be surprised to see that it's not actually there anymore, or the fear you were having seemed a little silly. Um, you know, in terms of power hour or worrying about reaching out to somebody who might just think you're selling them something. Leslie said something to me the other day and it makes perfect sense. She was upset with me. She was mad at me that I didn't reach out to her about coaching. Leslie had to reach out to me about coaching because I had a preconceived notion that she wouldn't want to do that. It's like, oh, you know, she, she can do her Shakeology. She's doing her diet. She's doing great. Da, 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 da. She does, you know, 
why? Why did I think that? Why I didn't I want to ask her? Was it because we're related? Like, I, I don't know why I didn't ask. I don't know what it was at this point. What did I learn from that? Ask everyone. The two girls who signed up with a girl I went to high school with, what did I learn from that? Ask everyone because if you don't, somebody else will. So let yourself fear it. feel it. Know that it's a natural feeling to fear it and move past that because once you step outside of your comfort zone, you break past that fear, that's when you're going to achieve the goals you have set for yourself. Um, in case you are looking for a reference for where I got all of that from, I got it from a Forbes magazine article online from October 30th, 2014. Um, I did a lot of research into different articles and things like that. And I thought about piecing a few things together, but I really, really liked their article and their take on it um, and found it very easy to apply a lot of what we're going through in our own businesses to that. So just in case you wanted a reference, I always like to give credit where it's due. Um, so we are going to stop the recording now and open for questions. I really appreciate you guys letting me um, take the time to record this so that we can share it with our team.